my my friends in the next few minutes we'll go through some intra operative to reduce endophthalmitis most of us think of infections following cataract surgery as endogenous uncontrollable acts but if we accept and understand that there are three origins one it can be endogenous as in blood borne the second are cluster endophthalmitis and third are isolated rare events and there are these three types of infections that can happen in the eye and once we understand this we can use appropriate methods to control them so where do the bacteria come from is it blood borne as in following septicemia is it coming from the infected surgical supply is do we have one bottle of infected bss one batch that's infected and all the patients where that particular batch is used get infection or is it a rare event because of contamination from bacteria which is a normal common soil of the eyelid skin and the tear film so the first step is to understand that endophthalmitis comes in three flavors the endogenous type is usually seen in very sick individuals with liver or lung abscess and normally we don't operate on these very sick individuals so endogenous endophthalmitis is not seen in the setting of cataract surgery and is usually seen in major multi specialty hospitals in people who are who are admitted for some other serious illness but in cataract surgery we do see the second and third type cluster endophthalmitis and isolated endophthalmitis clusters occur when you have a break in sepsis and break in the supply of sterile surgical material so normally you will have clusters of of infection and the infection rate will be more than 1 in 300 isolated endophthalmitis on the other hand comes because the contamination of the anterior chamber by the normal common salts in the tear film are able to overwhelm the host defenses once in a while and cause the rare infection so in our hands in the in the surgeon's hands we we can alter and we can control cluster endophthalmitis and isolated endophthalmitis so endogenous infections are seen in one in very sick patients and not in the first week or two or a month or two after cataract surgery endogenous endophthalmitis is usually starts as a, as an abscess that forms in the choroid breaks through the retina and causes a vitreous abscess and it is not seen as an anterior segment infection to start with cluster endophthalmitis comes due to break in sterilization if one particular load of surgical instruments is not sterilized properly every patient on whom that particular load is used will get infection and the infection rates are defined as those as infection seen as more than 1 in 300 the isolated endophthalmitis is comes from contamination from the tear film flora and usually the current accepted rate is 1 in 1000 to 1 in 2000 cataract surgeries the preferred practice pattern from shankar netralia lists the common bacteria isolated from the endophthalmitis seen from their patients and from the referred patients and they had divided as fulminant early acute subacute or late endophthalmitis and they have listed a number of common bacteria that they see causing these infections now let's just look at subacute or delayed infections we have these four common common organisms propionibacterium acne staph epidermidis a fungus called candida parapsilosis and cornibacterium now we all know that cornibacterium p acne and staph ap are all normal common salts in every one of us but what about candida parapsilosis if you look at wikipedia candida parapsilosis is also a, a normal human common salt and is is one of the fungi most frequently isolated from the human hands so this too is a normal human common soil when i started my ophthalmic career in in the ninth year 1986 the normal rate in those days was 1 in 200 to 1 in 300 cataract surgeries in the in the 1990s it has not changed much it was somewhere about 1 in 500 
But by the year 2000, throughout India, a rate of 1 in 1000 to 1 in, 1 in 2000 was taken as normal. Today, in the year 2017, many, many studies show that a rate of 1 in 5000 is very much possible. And I hope in the future, as we look more deeply into the causes, we can get a rate of 1 in 50,000 cataract surgeries. Most of us will be able to complete our surgical career without seeing a single bacterial endophthalmitis. The difference was the use of provirone iodine became widespread in the, in the mid-1990s and that dropped the rate of infection from 1 in 300, 300 to 1 in 1000 or 1500. The next step happens when, when centers start using intracameral antibiotics. The rate usually improves to 1 in 5000 to 1 in 10,000. So preoperative steps should be taken to prevent cluster infection. Clusters are a responsibility of the management of the hospital and there should be systems in place for sterile surgical supply. The instruments should be cleaned properly and there should be good protocols which will prevent cluster end off. Cluster end off are never the sole responsibility of the operating surgeon. It's the responsibility of the management that supplies the equipment to the operating surgeon. A headline like this in Indian Express last year, botched cataract surgery affects vision in five people, is purely because there was an infection in the supply of material in that particular camp. So what intraoperative tests can the surgeon take? A review of Cochrane database shows that Betadine 5% for 3 minutes has been shown to decrease infection rates and intracameral antibiotics has been shown to decrease and actually reduce infections. There is little or no data to support preoperative antibiotic drops, postoperative antibiotic drops or the use of antibiotic tablets. Major eye hospitals in Chennai, some of the largest of them, have stopped, completely stopped the use of preoperative and postoperative antibiotic drops and tablets in their cataract surgeries. Last year, Shimada et al. have published two papers that show that using 0.025% providone iodine irrigation, several drops to wet the cornea every 20 seconds, reduces intraocular contamination of bacteria in the small series of around 200 patients to nil no no contamination at all there is also some evidence to show that subconjunctival antibiotic given gives a massive high dose in the early post op period and that seems to reduce infection rates in certain hospitals we are all aware of the escrs endophthalmitis study and after that intracameral vancomycin cefiroxime and moxifloxacin have become the most commonly used drugs worldwide and they all seem to work well. We should also learn from, from experiences from other hospitals. We should learn from news articles. We should learn that some of the endophthalmitis clusters in India have happened because of infected irrigating solutions like, like Ringel lactate or BSS that was not sterile. So if you are using bottles with RL, please do autoclave the bottle. Please source the highest quality BSS that you can. Please do not use a Cheetle's forceps in the OT or in the OP. Cheetle's forceps cannot be sterilized and kept sterile for the entire duration of duty. And, and there have been instances of pseudomonas growing on the, on the tip of the Cheetle's forceps and that has contaminated the surgical field. Operation theta ducts have been a source of multiple endophthalmitis in one major hospital in, in India. Please share your similar experiences on the site so that we can learn from them and all of us can avoid the next event. As infection is a rare event, if we share information, everybody else can benefit from that. When the bacteria carrying particle count is, is, is above 500 to 1800 per cubic meter, infection rates increase. And this risk becomes insignificant when, when it is less than 180 bacteria carrying particle count per cubic meter. So improperly cleaned or processed air conditioning ducts is a potential source of infection. 
So during the among the important surgical steps, we must use 5% betadine in the conjunctival sac for 3 minutes. We should isolate the lids and the lashes and keep the surgical field sterile. And also we should position the face and locate the incision in such a way that we prevent ingress of tear film into the anterior chamber during the surgical, surgical maneuvers. Here is a patient just before starting surgery. I have just moved and I am showing the medial end where the drape is not attached firmly to the skin. If I inject a small quantity of trypan blue in this location, we can see the extent to which this trypan blue has spread. It has spread quite extensively. So sometimes we feel that the patient has been draped well, but that draping is totally inadequate and the tear film here is, to is in contact with the surface of the skin in a, in a very extensive area. We should be aware of this. The drapes are not foolproof. So a well-constructed incision is extremely important. We should accept that clear corneal incisions are associated with an increased infection rate when compared to sclerocorneal incisions. And there is some evidence to show that foldable, preloaded, hydrophilic and heparin coated lenses may have a lesser bacterial adherence are probably safer than other types of intractal lenses. We should make every attempt to secure the surgical wound at the end of surgery, whether it be with stromal hydration, air in the anterior chamber, with the use of sutures or with other hydration technique like the warm hydration technique. Intracameral moxifloxacin will also help us. So here we are seeing an example where we have finished surgery, we have finished irrigation aspiration of the viscoelastic just before stromal hydration. Before stromal hydration, I am putting a few drops of trypan blue at the side port and the main, main wound of this particular patient and see where all the trypan blue goes now. So I am dropping, you can see a, a, a little bit of leak, you can see a little bit of leak there. When I put a few drops of trypan blue at the side port and the main port, Amazingly, we can see the trypan blow flow into the anterior chamber. Would you have expected this? So this has happened within seconds of dropping a few drops of trypan blow. The anterior chamber wash with an irrigation aspiration and before stromal hydration it is possible for tear film to enter the anterior chamber at once in a while, if not in all our, our cataract surgery patients. There is a wrong way to give intracameral moxifloxacin. Please don't use any generic eye drop bottle. Severe task has occurred leading to blindness when, when the experience in the eye drops were injected into the eye along with, with the moxifloxacin. Please use Alcon Vigamox. Please use single use uniums and most specifically please use specially formulated intracameral preparations and we can get them from Orolab or from Entode Pharma. I have been using Vigamox for nearly 10 years and I have had no adverse reaction due to this over several thousand patients. So this is the way the, we normally prepare the intracameral moxifloxacin. The circulating nurse opens a fresh bottle of Alcon Megamox and takes care not to touch the tip of the bottle. The assisting nurse will use a 1 ml syringe and she will withdraw close to 1 ml from that bottle. After that, she will chain the needle for a 26 gauge cannula. I prefer to reuse the same cannula that I used in the early part of the surgery for hydro dissection and for a power wash. So that tells me that the cannula is absolutely free of particles. Then she will vent most of the moxifloxacin from this BD tuberculin 1 ml syringe till 0.1 ml, 0.1 ml of undiluted moxifloxacin now remains and this is injected via the side port into the anterior chamber after stromal hydration. We must thank the major eye hospitals in Tamil Nadu for generously sharing their infection data. This is an article published by HR, HN Madhavan and Group 
in the year 2010 from Shankar Netralia and what they found was that their infection rate was one, cat one in 1900 surgery. They also had an increased infection rate in their graft patients. 0.5% of the corneal grafts had, had endophthalmitis. The previous year, JCR has published the infection rate of several hundred thousand patients from Arvandai Hospital. Arvandai Hospital in that decade had an infection rate of 1 in 1100 cataract surgeries. So two different centers having two different philosophies, one a high cost center and one a low cost center. In the year 2016, last year, Arvandai Hospital published their seminal article on the efficacy of intracameral moxifloxacin in prophylaxis and they had two arms. One was a paying patient and the second was a free patient and every pay free patient had intracameral moxifloxacin instilled at the end of the cataract surgery. And they found that in the free patient sections, the infection for that year was one in 5000 cataract surgeries. IATA is a pan-national body and they, and they track accidents in the airlines, okay? Now, if, if you look at the recent uh, press report, the accident rate measured in accidents per 1 million flight was 1.61. If you take the carriers based in US with their several million flights every year, not a single accident, not a single fatal accident. Worldwide, less than 1.61 in the year 2016. How are they able to have an, an accident rate which is equal to an endophthalmitis rate which is close to 1 in 1 million? How is it possible? This happens because before takeoff, every plane has to be inspected. There is a checklist that the surgeon has to, which the pilot has to look into before he takes off. However senior or experienced the pilot, he has to follow the same checklist as the junior most pilot. If every surgeon in the world started following a, a strong checklist mandatorily, I am sure our infection rates will come down. We all should minimum look through the WHO safe surgical checklist. So in summary, providone iodine with a contact time of 5 minutes should be instilled into the conjunctival sac. We should use a good quality drape to isolate the lashes and skin from the surgical field. We must have a well constructed incision and you can think of using a scleroconial or a posterior corneal incision with a conjunctival cover. If possible use a foldable preloaded intraocular lens. Please start using intracameral moxifloxacin because Anterior chamber contamination can occur once in a while during routine phaco emulsification. If we follow these steps, all of us can have an infection rate in the range of 1 in 5000 to 1 in 10,000 among our cataract surgery patients. There is a wonderful review article published nearly 10 years ago in IJO, How to Prevent endo Endophthalmitis in Cataract Surgery by Aditya Kelkar and co-authors. Please go through that. So in the future, I believe using aspirating speculum, using an iodinated irrigating solution, perhaps adding an intracameral antifungal agent and stepwise accident analysis and correction of individual risk factors will, will take us towards having one infection in 50,000 cataract surgeries.